Hi everyone, my name is James. Welcome to King's Fine Woodworking. Today I want to talk to you about some new tool releases that just happened. I've been using MagSwitch tools for a very long time. They either make woodworking easier or safer, or in many cases both. And this first one I'm going to talk about is a power feeder base. If you don't know how a power feeder can benefit your shop, at least watch this for a couple of minutes and check it out. They had a kit in the past where you had to kind of build your own base and attach it to some magnets that they offered with the kit. And that uh, took a little bit of work to get it put together, but it was so popular they decided to create a dedicated unit for it. And it's basically two of these magnetic components. And they'll bolt directly to any small power feeder. Uh, all of the smaller power feeders have kind of a universal base uh, in terms of size of a universal bolting pattern. And this, uh, this is what this is designed to fit. It's pretty straightforward, uh, just washers and lock washers, and they bolt together. So most small shops have never had the experience or benefit of using a power feeder, but they're incredible. Um, they, they make so much work so easy, especially if you're doing any sort of bulk work or, or producing a lot of things in quantity, like a lot of rip cuts, stuff like that. And they're also very, very safe. The problem has always been is that the power feeder has to be bolted to your table saw or bolted to your router table or, or, or your shaper table, something like that. But nobody wants to drill holes in a small shop and permanently bolt a power feeder to their table. But MagSwitch has solved all that by putting the whole thing on a magnetic base. So the power feeder is of course sold separately. They're just selling the base. But basically you just set this thing down and you turn on these magnetic locks that engages the magnet and it holds this thing down. It holds this down with such force that you could actually lift the whole table saw off of the table with this magnetic base. So it's obviously very rock solid. And all you have to do is you put it approximately where you think the thing needs to go. And then of course, all power feeders have a wide range of adjustability. You can raise them up and down, in and out. You can tweak the head around so you can get it set up just right uh, in order to move your wood through the table saw. So basically, rather than you pushing the wood through the table saw, using a push stick, doing things like that, this device is just going to pull the wood through the saw. You can angle it and set it up so that it pulls the wood over to the fence and that it pushes the wood forward through the table saw. It kind of blocks the blade, protects your hands from the blade, and to take it off, you just flip this unlock switch here, and then just disengage the magnet. And that's it, the whole thing is loose, and just set it underneath your table for when you need to use it next time. It's really convenient. And like I said, the safety aspect is huge. So I've got it set up here on the right side of my fence this time. The nice thing about a magnetically mounted power feeder is you can put it wherever you want on your table saw, depending on how thick or how wide or you know what your wood is. But I've got it mounted over here to the right, and the safety factor is this. So I'm blocking the blade, so my hand isn't going to accidentally go into the blade. That makes it safe, but it also makes it safe because when you're doing a lot of cuts, like repetitive cuts, like I'm doing when I build a bunch of mallets, or if you build a bunch of cutting boards, things like that, you're going to make 20, 30, 50, 100 or more cuts in a row. And I sometimes make several hundred cuts in a row. And when you're doing things that are repetitious like that, sometimes you get a little bit lax. You, know, you get a little bit careless on accident without meaning to. And that's when bad accidents happen in the shop. If you have this device pulling the wood through the saw blade for you, you, you know, you can't mess up. You can't really accidentally get your hand in the blade. You can see that this completely blocks that and it keeps you safe. So for that reason, it's really worth it to me to have a power feeder. Now there are some caveats to this, of course. One is that it's just not cheap. Uh, the power feeder isn't a cheap tool and the magnetic base isn't a cheap tool. So you have to weigh the value of that versus what you're getting in your shop. You got to weigh that value against the safety and against the convenience. If you're doing mass cutting boards, these happen to be handles, but when I do a mass of cutting boards, it's the same thing. I do lots of rips like this. So if you're making good money doing production cutting boards, you know who you are, and this may be something you want to look into. So this next tool is the last one that I've picked to talk about today, and it's their drill press vise mount. If you have a drill press, and most of us do, and you've ever tried to drill small parts, round parts, um, anything that might be a little too dangerous to hold by hand, you'll probably put it in a vise. And if you're not, you probably should be putting it in a vise. Uh, now theirs actually holds a variety of vise sizes, which is good because a lot of vices aren't standardized. They are all different sizes and shapes. So theirs is designed to hold quite a variety of uh, drill press vices. And it works kind of something like this. You know, you're gonna take your piece, you're gonna put it in your vise, and you're gonna get it positioned for where you want it. 
Maybe it's a piece that's too small to hold by hand or a piece that you need real high precision drilling. And then of course you have to lock this down into place. You can't just free hand hold it usually, especially if you need precision. You need to have this securely mounted to the tabletop. And there's a few ways to do that, but they all require clamps. And some clamps just aren't that convenient to use. A quick clamp to, to use would be like uh, one of the squeeze clamps. But if the vise is forward so far that your squeeze clamp isn't going to reach, well, then you've got to get either a deep reach clamp or maybe one of the twin screw clamps. If it were back further like this, well, one of these would work. But there are a lot of pieces, small pieces that you drill where a standardized uh, quick clamp or a squeeze clamp just isn't going to work for you. And so what I used to do quite often is I would just pull out my twin screw clamp because it's got a much deeper reach, but it, you know, it takes a little bit of time to set up. This is a real pain if I just have a single hole to drill. Sometimes I'll spend five minutes or 10 minutes getting a piece of wood into place and setting it up just to spend 30 seconds drilling a hole. And then to top that off, quite often, no matter how tight I clamp it, the piece can still have some wiggle in it. And that's a problem if I'm using a Forstner bit or something where I just need a nice, clean, tight, aligned hole. Um, you know, I, I move it around to get it just in the right place, and, you know, I clamp it as tight as I can, but it's still going to wiggle or move, and that's tedious. So this is where their invention really comes in handy. So the vise mounts really easy to the base and it works with a big variety of vise sizes because there's lots of variability in the slots and how everything lines up and comes together. And they include the screws for this. They're special T-slot type of bolts that kind of drop in from the top and then twist and lock into place. What I've found since I've had this in my shop is I just leave my vise mounted to it permanently. If I need to switch out to a bigger vise, it just takes a couple of minutes to switch, which is not a big deal, but probably 95% of the time, I just use this standard vise size. Um, and I, I say standard, that's just standard for me. Um, you may use a vise that's a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, it just depends. I like this because it holds just about everything I've got and it's not too big, it's not too small, it's not too heavy. Uh, so we just put it in here and get it kind of centered in the base and then bolt it down. It's just as simple as that. If you are interested in either of these products by MagSwitch, I'm gonna put a link to them in the description down below. If you use that link, it's got my name attached to it. They do give a 10% discount. I'm really good friends with the person who helped design and invent these things. And, uh, and they always give us a discount when we offer them to people. Um, and also the same with the vise or the power feeder. I'll go ahead and put links down there to the vise that I use and the power feeder that I use. Uh, in case you're interested in getting something like that as well. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section down below, and uh, I can probably answer those for you. Uh, there's probably lots of questions here. All right, so now, now that we have the vice base in place, um, we'll just go ahead and position it like we were doing before. I just take a few seconds to line this up about where I want. And then I'll secure that in the vice, and double check it again make sure exactly where I want it and then just bam I turn the magnets on there's magnets on both sides and it locks it down here again their magnets so strong I could probably pick up my drill press so the, I never need to clamp it literally takes one second to spin those switches and lock it down it's rock solid and then just takes a few seconds for me to drill my hole and then I can go on about my day I don't have to worry about getting out clamps I don't have to worry about careful alignment don't have to worry about the clamps not being strong enough to hold it exactly in place the way I want and that's it. This is the head for one of our mallets, but I drill all sorts of things using the drill press vise. All small pieces, all round pieces, anything that would be normally difficult to hold or handhold or unsafe to handhold. That's it, when you're done, you just unlock it and pick it up and take it away. Hopefully some of you found this useful and if anyone bothered to stick around all the way to the end watching, I would like to thank you for doing so. Have a good day and I'll see you next time.